Back when I was a kid, I used to live in a town that was quite run down. Back then, I used to live with my parents and two younger sisters and an older sister. Because of how ghetto our town was, we shared a large garden with our neighbors. Next door were an old couple with their teenage kids, and I saw the father all the time. He never spoke a word to us and was solitary, tending to his own personal things rather than mingle with us folks. He would sometimes be seen cleaning his green car, and sometimes I would see his son cleaning it too, but his daughter I barely ever got to see. The only time I got to see the mother was when she was looking outside her window. There were rumors from my parents that she was not someone I would want to mess around with, and that she was really, really mean. But since I never got to see her, I thought that I would never have to converse with her. So I didn't really care or pay too much attention to what they had to say about her. One day, I had thrown my ball too far on their side of the front yard area, and went across to get it. That was when I saw her poke her head out. She was watching every step I took. I remember thinking that she looked very scary with her wrinkly eyes and her protruding nose. Her face was terrifying. On that Sunday, the son was cleaning their car and was blasting his music early in the morning. My dad went outside and told the son to lower it down because everyone was still sleeping. And instead of the boy responding to my dad, he just walked inside his house. Not even a minute later, the mom came outside holding a large knife. She started dashing towards my dad. Shocked, my dad went around to the other side of their car as she tried to slash and stab at my dad. At this point, everyone in the house was up and watching the horror unfold. Only my older sister went outside, but she was defenseless and couldn't do anything, only watched them at the doorway. My dad told my sister to go and grab the gun because he was ready to shoot her if she kept slashing and swinging. But my sister couldn't budge. I mean, what could she really have done? The mother was slashing and stabbing, focusing on my dad, and could switch targets in a moment's time. Apparently, one of her neighbors called the police, and the son ran outside to his mother and grabbed something off of her. The police came and took down the son and the mom, and found out that the mom had tons of weapons on her, and that what the son took from her was a switchblade. When everything simmered down, the police told my dad that they had found disturbing things in the house. For instance, there were disturbing carvings on the walls with swear words on every corner. The house was dirty and was in terrible shape. The worst part was that there was blood and hair on the wall from when the mom would beat the daughter repeatedly, presumably on the head. My family almost choked when we heard that. It was absolutely shocking and it made sense as to why the dad was always outside and why the daughter was practically never seen. My dad didn't press any charges, even though I really wanted him to, but rather he insisted that she needed some mental help and that he would rather see her be helped in some way rather than locked up somewhere. We never saw that family since, and so many more disturbing things have been dug out when they left the house. I still don't think I'm entirely over the situation. I live in North Wales, UK. For anyone who has had the pleasure of visiting, it truly is a beautiful place to live. Though, for an adolescent boy, it is certainly lacking in things to do. As a result, my friends and I would often find ourselves mindlessly exploring areas of countryside and coastlines. Despite it being quite sparsely populated, in comparison to the closest cities, there's a dual carriageway running right along the coast from Wales into England. 
Also, train tracks run alongside this road for most of its course, occasionally passing overhead via a small cement bridge. Anyway, there was one night a few years ago when about four of us randomly decided to explore the inside of one of these bridges. One of us saw a manhole cover nearby which we believed to be the entrance. But on closer inspection, we discovered that several tools would be required in order to gain entry. We returned with the necessary equipment and proceeded to unbolt the cover. This had to be done stealthily, as the train track was right beside us, not close enough to be in danger, but definitely a sufficiently small distance to cause panic for any train driver. And panic usually means police. It wasn't long before we had removed the heavy steel disc and had started descending the ladder down. Once we all had safely reached the bottom, we decided to cross to the other side. At this point, we were totally confined in a space that leads into the main area. If you are confused as to what the hell this bridge is supposed to be, you probably should be, because it was rather peculiar. I mean, I would have never known there was even an inside had we not found the manhole. So as we squeeze and crouch, and at one point scrape along our bellies to the other side of the structure, there grew a sense of claustrophobia. The sound of the motorway calmed us down, however. As we kept scraping along the narrow corridor, one of us claimed they could see some object in the distance. Slightly hesitantly, we agreed to investigate it. Bad move. I reached the end first, and let me tell you, I have never felt the same sense of dread before or since. In front of me was a single fold-away chair positioned facing a wall. On the wall was a partially torn page from a newspaper or magazine showing a nude lady in a devious yet erotic position. More disturbingly, the eyes of the woman on display had been cut from that page. Removed with precision, not just hastily ripped off. The scene that lay before us had rendered us completely speechless, and an overpowering sense of panic could be felt collectively. That was when we found the condom. The horrendous, gut-wrenching, blood-drenched condom. Needless to say, we got the hell out of there, smashing our knees and shins against the sharp cement edges that lined the path to the ladder where we had entered. Of course, we were all praying to God that the manhole hadn't been resealed, as it would be impossible to tell until you reached the ladder itself. Thankfully, the exit route was clear, and we probably dashed as far away as our legs could carry us. I'm sure this ending comes as a disappointment to many, as we luckily never bumped into the twisted individual who resided down there, but I must stress how radically insane and out of the norm this was where I live. The reason I mentioned the population earlier was with purpose. There's easily enough people here to escape the realms of quote crazy country folk, yet nowhere near enough people to have someone clearly lose grip on society without somebody taking notice. For example, there was literally only one homeless man who everyone in the area knew and grew fond of, eventually resulting in a mass gathering at his funeral when he passed away. I sometimes think, though not recently, about what kind of person would climb down into that bridge and navigate through the narrow corridor submerged in darkness to sit facing a wall and do god knows what. It has just come to my realization that what we unearthed that night has not once been uttered to another soul. As a naive teenager, it was the type of thing you just wanted to forget. But reflecting back on it, we should have let the police or somebody know what was down there, since it clearly wasn't the doings of a healthy-minded individual.
In 1993, our family lived in a small town called Ritzville, Washington. I was five years old at the time, and what I experienced has left me thinking about it every single night for the past 22 years. I shared a room and bunk bed with my little brother. The room had a small, fairly deep closet located a few feet from the foot of the bunk bed. Located on the wall was a small vent that, at night, when the living room light was on, would shine through giving my room a slight ambient glow. Well, one night, I had to go to the bathroom, and when I sat up and was about to take the covers off, I noticed that at the foot of the bunk bed was this tall, black figure with a giant oval head that spanned the width of the bunk bed staring at me. It had two small, yellow eyes that were apart, and I noticed this thing stood around six feet tall. Its skin was charcoal and lumpy. I stared at it for a good five seconds before I threw the covers over my head. Five seconds of this monster being ingrained into my head, I could feel the evil surrounding it. I was up for a while before I fell asleep again, so I have no idea how long it was there. In the morning, the first thing I noticed was the closet door. I make it a habit to close closet doors every night, but it was wide open. My mom was the first to know about it, and you know how most parents kind of wave off their kids' experiences as a bad dream? Well, she didn't. She knew I saw something, because they've seen it. I had nightmares for weeks after seeing it. In my dream, this being picks me up and starts torturing me. I haven't seen it since, and I never want to see it again. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a like and share it to your friends and family. It would honestly mean a lot to me. I actually started making and planning this video back in August, and I never thought in a hundred years it would take this long to complete. Let me know which story was your favorite down in the comments section below. And thanks again for watching, and I hope you like and subscribe.